Hello, everyone, and welcome to another premium Q&A with the man behind it all, the brains behind the operation at awesomeo.com. Awesomeo himself, Mr. Alex Baker. Alex, how are you doing today? Uh, how's it going? Good, good. Hey, you know, it works. Uh, it took a little bit of, of elbow grease by our boy Josh Engelman behind the scenes to get this up and running. But we're here. This is our third Q&A just for premium members of awesomeo.com. So if you're seeing this, you've signed up, and we thank you for giving money to this operation and helping <laughs> us exist. Um, but yeah, let's, what we try to do every week is uh, get into Alex's head a little, get some questions from a top player in the DFS space, figure out what he's thinking. Um, one question which I've had, it, and we've actually had a lot in the live streams this week, uh, is about weather and MLB in particular. And Alex, I know you do things to account for it, but how are you handling weather concerns? And in particular, how do you factor them into your lineup building process as you get closer to lock? So the way I handle weather is I will make a prediction what the chance the game will be postponed is. Uh, for example, last night with Baltimore, there was a ton of uh, ton of chance of rain. The radar was kind of ominous. And to top it off, they said they were going to delay the game to start. So I had that as like a 75% chance to get postponed. So then I just took all my projections for those players and multiplied them by 0.25, the chance that the game would play. And because that made them low. Uh, I didn't have any in my lineups, but uh, another game was in Washington, D.C., not too far from Baltimore, so it's kind of like the same storm, but the radar showed the worst parts weren't going to hit it, so I, I ended up giving that game like a 10% chance of getting postponed. Um, so I actually had some of the players from the Yankees on my teams because I had them as very good plays to begin with. So even at 0 0.9 multiplier, they're still pretty good. Uh, it didn't end up working out that great for me because the game was suspended after the sixth inning. Right. Um, but that's how I did it. It didn't work out perfectly last night. But uh, either way, uh, you can see that is in the rankings. That includes the multiplier for the weather. So if I think a game has bad weather chances... The players will have bad uh, value, bad fantasy points grades. And are you downgrading even if there are weather concerns in general? Like if it was rainy in that area and it was like a risk, like are, are you still giving a downgrade to those guys? Or are you just like, oh, if it's passed, it's fine? Like, I mean, it, there could still be some residual effect, I guess, on the field and in terms of the guys, you know, mindsets and all that. It's not really a factor in my model, but... Uh... Most of the time, uh, I don't think there's much chance of postponement. Like last night again, like Boston had rain. Uh, that was happening, during, like, and it's supposed to continue through game time. Uh, but the weather model showed it kind of dissipating by nine. So I just kind of uh, said, well, that game is uh, definitely going to play. And they even announced a start time before lock. So. Uh, I just uh, had those players as normal. Yeah, I was looking for a reason why I should have uh, downgraded Eduardo Rodriguez yesterday because he was not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have worked out. Yeah, no, I would have. If only there had been some weather that had maybe scared me away. <laughs> more. Um, but, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Um, so I guess a question that you had wanted to talk about, which you answered on Twitter, but it's a kind of big holistic question. Uh, of course, if you're not following Alex on Twitter, you should at Osmo DFS. Um, but the question was, if you were to play five lineups, how many different pitchers would you use? Are you always stacking two or three teams? Are you using $50,000 each time? And do you try to use all A values in your rankings? So a, a bit of a 10-part ten, ten question there in one. <laughs> but um, how would you answer that guy's question? How would you approach it if you were just building five lineups, let's say? So that's definitely a great question because with five lineups, you want to have each lineup be significantly different so that you're not uh, building the same lineup five times. So I think the best way to do it is pick five stacks you like uh, first. And uh, what you want to do is kind of find the stacks that are a little bit contrarian. I think those have the best chance for making money. Because a lot of times, like, the top stack, like uh, Cleveland this morning, I think, like, most of the players, like, 25% owned on a nine-game slate. So there's not much money to be made there. You want to find the kind of contrarian stack you think is going to do well. Uh, usually each stack in a decent size slate only has between like a 5 to 15% chance 
of being the top stack of the night. And you can find information about that on our weekly or uh, twice a week article about the top stack uh, percentages. So uh, if you make five lineups, you're basically giving yourself five times that to have the best stack, which will give you a good chance to win. So yeah. I start with the stack. Uh, and then uh, you want to pick the pick the rest of the players after based on your remaining salary. Just kind of uh, pick the pitchers last and just kind of pick whichever ones like fit. Unless there's one guy that you really want to get in. And how much are you spending overall? Are you getting how close to that salary cap are you usually landing on? Usually uh, pretty close to 100% on like a big slate. Uh, today I was noticing uh, maybe I had some lineups that were in like the 48 to 50k range on DraftKings. But uh, usually you want to just spend all of your salary because uh, you can get better players. And, um, and then the last part of the question, uh, which I think we talked about at more length last week, but are you trying to use all A values from your rankings or is it a mix? How are you approaching that for this kind of situation? I definitely am not trying to use all A values because those players, everyone knows they're kind of underpriced uh, and they tend to carry the highest ownership. So you have to weigh that factor in with the fantasy points grade and the value grade. Yeah, there is an expression which people say a lot of the DFS industry is paying up to be contrarian, and that can often mm -hmm. be the case. If you have a lot of cheap stacks out there with a high Vegas total, it um, could be good to get off of that. So there you go. That's how Alex would approach five lineups. So hopefully that guy's happy with getting two answers, really getting a good value <laughs> on that. <laughs> that guy's yeah. probably, you got a personal one on Twitter and an extra one here. Well, um, the trick it, is he made it all one question. If he just like gave five different questions, we probably wouldn't have sat and answered all five of them. That's true. Um, actually, here's another another pro tip from a uh, guy Tom on Twitter. Another also a value question, but he opens up, "Hey, loving the website again. A great way to get your question answered on this video." Compliment <laughs> um, us if you want to tell Alex is handsome. If you want to tell me how funny <laughs> I am and great. Gladly accept that to get your question on the line. Um, but this guy's question is: When you're building NBA lineups, how do you start? Are you using the value plays first or your high price guys? Um, what are you doing? I don't know. I assume he means general NBA lineups and not showdown slates, but if you want to answer both parts of that, I guess. Wow. Uh, well, I'm glad he included that part about the website being great, because otherwise <laughs> I would be super sarcastic right now. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Um, so I'll focus on tonight's slate, because uh, I, I think we're done with uh, regular slates for the rest of the year, pretty much. Uh, so the... The way NBA usually works is that there are like a few guys in the top range, and there are more guys in each range below that. So generally, I would start with the top guys and then kind of vary uh, the lineups by some of the remaining guys. So like tonight, uh, we have Durant, Curry, and Harden. I think those are good options. Like I'm thinking about FanDuel right now. So I think those are good options for your MVP, which uh, gets you 2x at the moment. Uh, and then you can kind of uh, start from there. Uh, maybe you pick, uh, there's Chris Paul, Draymond Green, and Clay Thompson. So maybe you pick like three of those six, and then you fill out the rest of your lineup with uh, whatever guys make the salary work. Cool. That works for me. Um, I'm okay with that answer. And I guess for showdowns in particular, while we're talking about it, is there, is, there have been a couple, I think, noticeable shifts in the terms of the people that have won um, the slates. And actually, yesterday on DraftKings in particular, one guy got a hundred, the 100 grand all to himself uh, and nobody else who shared the same lineup. Um, and it's been involving like using super duper cheap guys, like basically at minimum price um, and or a little bit above that. And then just filling the stars out. Have you noticed anything, I guess, in terms of lineup construction that stands out that you know might be helpful for these guys during the waiting days of the NBA season? So I think uh, the game is changing slightly because FanDuel they kind of changed the format, right? Uh, so that actually increases the number of possible lineups. So that gives you more leeway to kind of be creative on DraftKings. Uh, with right now, it's all just uh, utility slot. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty hard to be contrary in a good in a good way because all those one kind of guys, 
the basically guys that aren't in the rotation. So like ninety percent of the time they're not even gonna see the floor. Most of the time it's like for a couple minutes or something. So uh, like it becomes really hard to to I guess you could just hope to get like a couple points and then the contrary in lineup construction gets you uh to the top. But that's not really the approach I'm taking right now. I'm I'm content tying with a bunch of people. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like, and I mean, this is something where I I would find our ownership projections. If you're watching us, you're a premium member. Use them to kind of figure out because I think that's what people have been doing is basically using the Larry Nances and the uh, the other day Sean Livingston's of the world, like right. to just differentiate. Because then at least you're getting a guy who's like nine percent, five percent owned, and that alone gets you off the beaten path. But I don't know. Again, use our ownership projections. That's one way to go about it. Just thought you might have some intrigue. It's it's tough. Like the showdown slates are tough. But for people who want to play NBA. It's the only option until WNBA season. <laughs> well, one of the tips I have is uh, a couple of days ago, I think Nick Young had been out of the rotation. Mm-hmm. But um, I was kind of thinking versus the Rockets, just based on like the size of the lineups, maybe he would get more time over Kevin Kevon Looney. <laughs> it didn't end up happening, but Nick Young ended up getting the court. So I guess the logic worked out. Yeah, he got those open threes, and that was he and Clay both got the exact same role. But it's interesting. It's an interesting series that might end very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, another question from Scott on Twitter. This is more of a general one, and I, I don't know if you're going to have a direct answer for this, but he asks, "What's the most consistent sport to focus on for DFS success?" He primarily plays NBA DFS, but do you think it's better to focus on one sport or spread yourself across multiples? Obviously, you are the top-ranked player in a bunch of sports, but for somebody who's maybe getting into it. How would you approach it? So that's exactly why we have the all access membership on our site is so that, you know, maybe you're a big fan of baseball and you don't know golf as much. So you can kind of make some good lineups using our rankings and ownership projections. Uh, In general, I think you should play as many sports and slates as you have time for because that allows you to invest more money without uh, increasing the risk of going broke, essentially. So basically you're you're being able to have more uh, more opportunities to play. So you can, uh, even if you're just betting a little bit of your bankroll on each one, that will, since those are independent of each other, that doesn't like increase your overall risk compared to just playing the same sport 20 days straight, you know? Yeah, and, and there are also a lot of similar principles, which we've discussed kind of at, at a high level here. Um, that are going to pour it across every sport, just knowing the value, being price sensitive. Um, you know, so I think it does make sense to, to use a lot, especially given the tools that we have. Like Alex said, on premium, on osmo.com, a um, lot of data there that you can use. And it's going to be pretty similar across every sport. And maybe you'll find ways to, you know, be interested. There's PGA events coming up. We're doing PGA rankings, right? So, yep. um, yeah, a lot going on there. Uh, yeah, and I think that's all I have for questions this week. Anything you want to touch on, Alex, before we call it a wrap? Oh, that was great. Uh, well, thank you guys uh, who are watching, and thanks for the guys who submitted questions. It's always interesting to kind of hear what people want to talk about. Yeah, make sure to submit these. I usually put out a call for questions uh, right before we do these on a Wednesday. So make sure to catch that at the at Osmo underscore com Twitter. If you're watching this video and want to get a question or leave it in the YouTube comments, uh, if that's a thing you can do, I assume it is. But either way, if, you know, get the question to me somehow and we'll make sure we address them next week. And thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you, Alex, for your time. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks. Thanks, Alex.